During this chronic graphics card shortage, integrated GPUs like the Vega 7 in AMD's Ryzen 5 5600G have proven themselves up to the challenge of filling in for a discrete graphics card, even in AAA games, provided you don't mind dropping the odd quality setting here and there. What they lack, however, is the necessary horsepower to drive the kind of high frame rates needed for competitive esports titles. There's no need to interrogate that statement at all, you should just take my word for it. There's, there's no way these iGPUs can game us 144. Last time I tried one of these videos, I attempted to get an entry-level graphics card from 2016 to play AAA games from 2021 at 60 FPS, and that was a pretty big ask. This time, I'm not expecting the Vega 7 to perform such a lofty task. Rather than AAA titles, I'll be looking at the kinds of competitive online games one might reasonably expect to play at 144 FPS or higher. This kind of challenge would have been nigh on impossible with previous generation APUs with lower core counts and performance per clock, but thanks to the Ryzen 5 5600G's 6 cores, 12 threads and generous room for overclocking, I think I'm in with a shot. I'm running the CPU at 4.6GHz on a B450 motherboard with a 500MHz overclock on the graphics cores and paired with some DDR4 4000 CL18 RAM to make sure the CPU doesn't choke trying to handle all these frames. Starting off lightly, Valorant is normally CPU limited by even a moderately powerful graphics card and I dare say the 5600G could power a discrete card like the RX 460 to well over 200 FPS, but in this case either the Vega 7 or the relatively slow RAM is holding things back. Dropping MSAA goes a long way to resolving this, and with everything else on low it's possible to demolish the 144 FPS target with an average of 162.4 and 1% lows of 132.3. Not that you really expect otherwise, but this game is an ideal way to show off your shiny new 144Hz monitor, especially as it's free. I don't think this will surprise anyone either, CSGO is a decade old and at this point is probably single-handedly driving the 360Hz display market. Still, some of the settings took me distressingly close to the 100fps mark, so to be safe I stuck to 1080 low across the board and gained an average FPS of almost 200. In fact it was generally a smooth ride the whole way. I'd attribute the low 1% scores to scene transitions when I died, which as I'm not a regular CSGO player, was pretty often. As I said in my full Ryzen 5600G video, I'd expected more from Fortnite in DX12 using Pro settings, with it scoring a paltry 80 FPS. Of course, Performance mode exists so that we can play like it's a mobile port and trade in visual fidelity for frames. Thanks no doubt to swapping the staircases for ramps, the 5600G can now roll along smoothly at over 150fps. 1% lows dropped into the high 50s and low 60s, mainly during the late game once the volumetrics came in, but generally it's a pretty smooth experience. To break up the pace a little, I thought I'd drop in some Rocket League as a palette cleanser from all these shooters. 1080 low gives a great, smooth experience on the 5600G, but it doesn't quite hit the 144 target. It falls short by 16 frames, which, granted, might be good enough for you, but for the purposes of hitting my arbitrary target, I dropped the resolution a notch to 1600x900. Alas, it's been months since I last played, and I've pretty much forgotten how, so all my test footage sucks. I was disappointed but not entirely surprised that Splitgate couldn't hit the target at 1080 low. As I've pointed out in my last Vega 7 video, the game is a lot more GPU limited than a lot of other esports shooters. Results in the high 90s aren't to be sniffed at, I'll admit, but this is my video, I'm not settling for less than 144 FPS, and dropping the resolution slider to 75% seemed like the way to do it, scoring an average of 160 FPS, and with 1% lows almost reaching 100. Okay, 
I lied. I'm totally settling for less than 144 FPS. Older Call of Duty titles from the late 2000s and early 2010s might do better here, but Vanguard just can't cut the mustard. Although GPU usage remains high, something about the APU is holding things back. At 1080 minimum settings with FSR performance, a 32 player game saw an average of a little under 70 FPS. Dropping the native resolution to 720 had almost no effect on the frame rate and looked like absolute crap. And again, I'm going to have to take an L in Apex Legends. 1280 by 720 is about as low as I'd want to go in a battle royale, and I was of course killed by someone I could barely even tell was there. At lowest settings, averages were about 100 FPS. 1% lows held at 77, and it's a mostly playable enough experience, if you don't include the part where it's impossible to tell enemies from trees. Uh, this is all going a bit wrong, isn't it? I think I've messed up. I set myself a goal. I even named the video after that goal. Now I can't even bloody well hit it in two of the games I've tested. Should have stuck with a f***ing top 10 channel. I could be the new game ranks by now. What am I doing with my life? You know what? F*** it, I'm not going to end this without a win. If any game is scalable enough to have a chance of reaching a high frame rate on integrated graphics, it's GTA 5. By dropping settings to minimum and resolution scaling to half of 1920 by 1080 it still looks fine. Maybe you could add the FSR patch to make it look a bit cleaner, though it won't do much for the jagged edges, but eh, we're still ever so slightly short of the target here. 120 FPS is about as good as it gets without dropping the native resolution further. Thankfully there's still one last trick to squeeze those last few FPS out of the GPU. Dipping into the game's config file and setting shadows to zero completely disables shadows in the game. As well as making everything look instantly worse, it has a notable improvement on frame rates. I'm used to this being the nuclear option to get the game to run on catastrophically bad GPUs, but I've created an unrealistic goal for myself and this seems like the only way of getting there. Thankfully this last ditch effort actually pushes the counter over the line with an average FPS of 148.6. Alright, I can see this might be a bit of a silly concept for a video, I'm sure most people who can afford 144Hz monitors wouldn't buy one without having a graphics card to back it up, but I had fun and I got to play some games I don't usually include in my benchmarks. If you want to see how the 5600G and Vega 7 integrated graphics do in more contemporary AAA games, there's a video linked on screen now. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.